MIS T-Lift is a surgical technique used by spine surgeons. The goal of the procedure is to stabilize your spine, reduce back pain, and lessen leg pain. Minimally invasive surgery may have potential advantages when compared to traditional spine surgery, including smaller incisions, less blood loss, smaller scars, a shorter hospital stay, less pain during recovery, as well as a quicker recovery time. Hi, I'm Mike Krzyzewski, coach of Duke University men's basketball team. When you hear words like work or hard, don't shy away from them. My players learn to love work when they see results. What's really hard is living in pain, but you don't have to. Consider what your level of play is right now. Now think about how long you can afford to stay that way and still get the job done. As you prepare for your MIS T-Lift procedure, your surgeon will want to know your medical history in order to identify anything that could affect anesthesia or bone healing. It's important to pay attention to your nutrition in the weeks leading up to surgery. Diets high in protein, calcium, and vitamin D help in the bone healing process. In addition, patients should stop smoking or chewing tobacco four weeks before the surgery and several months after because nicotine impairs bone healing. Alcohol, caffeine, and herbals can cause bleeding problems and should not be taken one week before and two weeks after surgery. Also, some medications should not be taken prior to or after the procedure, such as anti-inflammatory medicines like aspirin and ibuprofen. Check with your surgeon for recommendations about these. Your physician will also discuss the possible risks associated with minimally invasive T-lift surgery. Some possible complications include infection, failure of the bone graft to heal, pain, and nerve damage. Be sure to discuss these risks and any additional concerns you may have with your surgeon. During the procedure, you will lie face down on the operating table. Your surgeon will access your spine through a small incision in your back to minimize the disruption of muscle tissue. Your surgeon will place a special instrument called a retractor into the incision and upon reaching your spine will remove the disc between the bones to create a space for fusion to occur. If the disc has collapsed from disease, the bones are moved back into a more normal position. Your surgeon then prepares the area where the disc was removed so that a spinal implant can be placed. After measuring the size of the space, your surgeon inserts an implant made of bone or a strong synthetic material filled with bone graft into the disc space. This implant gives critical support to the spine and aids in bone healing. Your surgeon may place additional bone graft or other special material around the implant to stimulate bone growth, which may take several months. Your surgeon will then place screws called pedicle screws into the bone and connecting rods are inserted into the screws to give your spine extra stability. This holds everything in place as your spine heals. Over time, if your surgery is successful, the bones will grow together or fuse. Upon healing, small scars will remain on your back from your incisions. Recovery after minimally invasive T-lift surgery is generally quicker than traditional open surgery because the approach minimizes damage to your muscles. While pain varies a few weeks after surgery, you should expect soreness in your back for the first several days. If your surgeon uses bone from the pelvis for the bone graft, you will also feel soreness in your hip area. Pain is managed with medication for two to four weeks and rehabilitation begins at the hospital. A physical therapist will help you get out of bed and walk safely around the hospital. The first couple of days after surgery, patients usually need a walker and a back brace may also be used when moving. A potential benefit of minimally invasive spine surgery is a shorter hospital stay. You will likely remain in the hospital for one to three days. Once you return home, it's important to keep an eye on that incision. If it becomes red, tender, or if there's drainage, alert your doctor. Some minor leg numbness or discomfort is common for a few days, but let your doctor know if it is severe or lasts more than one to two weeks. During recovery, you will need to limit your activities. 
Walking will help with healing, but you'll need to avoid strenuous activities or housework. You can use ice packs every four to six hours to help alleviate muscle soreness the first couple of weeks. You may resume driving and sexual activity four to six weeks after surgery, depending on your condition. Generally, around six weeks after surgery, you can return to work, but your doctor will help you decide the best time to do that. It typically takes about six months or more for the bone fusion to completely heal. Your doctor will monitor progress of the fusion healing with x-rays or a scan. During that time, high intensity activities like running and heavy lifting will need to be avoided to make recovery as smooth as possible. My surgery has not only helped me as a coach, but it has also allowed me to become a more active husband, father, and grandfather. I was pretty nervous about the surgery at first, but I'm so happy I went through with it. When I returned to physical activity, I was really amazed at the things I could do. How many times do you say, I don't know if I have the time to do it? You can make the time to do it. Why would you want to live with back problems? Positive attitude matters. You must tell yourself, I'm not going to let pain win. But listen, I'm Coach K, not Dr. K. Make sure you ask your doctor if a spine procedure is right for you.